We light the Christmas candle, the white candle at the center, and as we do so, we observe a moment of silence for all those who have died from COVID-19 in 2020, and for those families who were mourning with an empty chair around their dinner table. A prayer in your love for them. Blessed are those who mourn, they shall be comforted, said the Christ of our faith. We acknowledge that the land on which we meet was a land of the people of the Kulan Nation, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulan Nation. We pay our respects to their elders past, present, and future, and we work for reconciliation. Our sacred journey begins with this candle lighting in this very king. It's in your hymn book and it's number 447. Lord, your almighty word. Let's sing it together. Grant me the awareness of how good life is, even if it doesn't give me what I expect. Right? Millions of people now, this time of the year, are falling back upon themselves with jobs they no longer have, businesses that have gone under, livelihoods gone. 
So there's a fine balance, isn't it? Between on the one hand, not giving yourself over to bitterness and cynicism, not only about others, but about life and your prospects. On the other hand, our response is what matters, and there is an energy in life. Christians call it the word, the creative energy in the heart of the universe, which if we can link into it, if we can commune with it, we can achieve abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. So may that be your promise and your blessing on this first Sunday of 2021. Our devotional reading is from Howard Thurman. What is Christmas? And it leads us to the time of silence, of quieting the mind and prayer. Here's a reading, what is Christmas? Christmas is a mood a quality, a symbol. It is never merely a fact. As a fact, Christmas is a date on the calendar. To, to the believer, it is the anniversary of the event in human history. An individual may relate themselves meaningfully to the fact or to the event, but that would not make Christmas. The mood of Christmas, what is it? It is a quickening of the presence of other human beings into whose lives a precious part of one's own has been released, a kind of communion. It is a memory of other days when in one's path, an angel, that is a messenger of hope, appeared, spreading a halo over an ordinary moment or a commonplace event. It is an iridescence of sheer delight that once bathed your whole being with something, something more wonderful than words can ever tell. Of such is the mood. Of Christmas. The quality of Christmas. What is it? It is the fullness with which fruit ripens, blossoms unfold into flowers, and life holds below in the darkness. It is the richness of vibrant colors and emotions, the calm purple of grapes, the exciting redness of tomatoes, the shimmering light of the noiseless stirring of a lake at sunset. Christmas is the sense of plateau behind a large rock, where one may take a temporary respite from wings that chill. Of such is the quality of Christmas. The symbol of Christmas. What is it? It is the rainbow arched over the roof of the sky when the clouds are heavy with foreboding. It is the cry of life in the newborn babe. When forced from its mother's nest, it claims its right to live. It is the brooding presence of the eternal spirit, making crooked paths straight. Rough places smooth, tired hearts refreshed, then hope stirred with the newness of life. It is the eternal spirit creating a new heaven and a new earth. Christmas is the promise of tomorrow at the close of every day, the movement of life in defiance of death, and the assurance that love is sturdier than hate. That right, more confident than wrong, that good, good, is more permanent than evil. 
What is Christmas? May the spirit of Christmas live on in your personality through 2021. It's only been about nine months since I used the PowerPoint, so I'm not going to do it. Fumbling around. It does feel pretty good. I feel like I'm going back to what we were doing a million years ago in February and March before the COVID 19 lockdown. Quiet the surface noises. Listen to the rain. Listen to your mood and your emotions right now. Listen for the still small voice, which is the eternal spirit of God. What does it say to you about living your one precious and wild life? Have a live it well. A lot of life. Be calm. Be at peace. Let your body relax. Reach out now with your feelings. Reach out with your soul to the spirit of Christmas. The spirit that was in Christ. Reach out with your feelings and your compassion to others. Relax. Reach out with your best feelings and your soul to Mother Earth, to all living things and animals. Peace. Peace on Earth, goodwill to all. Have a will that is good to your, towards yourself, towards others. And we join together in prayer. We pray. Eternal God, open unto me. Open unto me life from my darkness. Open unto me courage for my fear and anxiety. Open unto me hope for my despair. Open unto me now, peace, eternal peace for all my turmoil. Open the door unto me, joy, joy for my sorrow. Open unto me yourself, for myself. 
eternal God. We send forth our love for those who have suffered a breakdown, especially as Christmas and the New Year approach. We pray for healing and hope for those who have suffered a breakdown in themselves or in their most important relationships. Blessed are those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Eternal God, we give thanks now for that special relationship, for that person in our lives who anchors our life in being and in the blessing of being alive. We give thanks for the activities and the good causes that bring us back to you and to our best response to life. Help us to live 2021 well with wisdom from our spiritual divine self. This is our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We approach the second part of our sacred readings from the scriptures in the New Testament. Uh, the job has been told a bit different if it was three wise women and three wise guys visiting the day of Jesus. You probably heard this one. They would have asked for directions, they would have brought a casserole, and they would have cleaned the dirty dishes for God's sake. This is a story which how shall we put it, um, was part of the imaginative storytelling of the first century. It's not uh, entirely historically accurate. Uh, as part of the progressive Christian tradition, we try to understand what was the voice of the historical Jesus, what we can know historically. And then there was the storytelling of the early church, which was based part on history, <coughs> part on, bless you, bless you, and part on their faith. There is a truth, though, in this imaginative story of the three wise men. Here it is. Flattery will get you everywhere if you live according to your ego, to your vanity, to your false pride. King Herod rolled out the red carpet for the three wise men from a foreign nation. He made them, he made them feel like a million bucks. Why? so that they would tell him the way to the Christ child. But in a dream, God still speaks to us in our dreams, awake or asleep. In a dream, they had a vision. And that vision spoke to them of their sense of self in communion with God's self and what they needed to do. I hope that you will Keep open the door of your soul to that spirit this year, the way the three wives have been. Here's our story. Matthew 2, verses 1 to 12. Wise men to visit Jesus. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. When Jesus was born, some wise men came from the east. Came to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the baby who was born to be the king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When he heard all this, he was troubled, as were all the people in Jerusalem. Herod called a meeting of all the leading priests and teachers of the law and asked them where the Christ would be born. They answered, In the town of Bethlehem, 
Would you do that? The prophet wrote about this in the scriptures. This is the listening. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not just an insignificant village in Judah. A ruler will come from you who will be like a shepherd for my people Israel. In the month of Then Herod had a secret meeting with the wise men and learned from them the exact time they first saw the star. He sent the wise men to Bethlehem, saying, Look carefully for the child. When you find him, come to me, so I can worship him too. After the wise men heard the king, Herod, the star that they had seen in the east went before them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When the wise men saw the star, they were filled with joy. They came to the house where the child was and saw him with his mother, Mary. And they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their gifts and gave little treasures, gold, frankincense, and milk. But God warns the wise men in the dream not to go back to Herod. So they returned to their own country by a different way. What a beautiful hymn we now have that leads us to the reading from the Gospel of St. John. It's called We Three Kings. Uh, Josh and the team, John and um, Jenny are going to lead us to this great hymn of our faith. I'd like to just see it with us. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Thank you. 
the gospel reading according to St. John. A second reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, reading verses 1 through 14. You behold the world full of grace and truth. When all things began, the world, world already was. The Word dwelt with God, and what God was, the Word was. The Word, then, was the God at the beginning, and through Him all things came to be. No single thing was created without Him. All that came to be was alive with this life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines on in the dark, and the darkness has never lasted. There appeared a man named John, sent from God. He came as a witness to testify to the light, that all might become believers through him. He was not himself the light, he came to bear witness to the light. The real light which enables every man was even then coming into the world. He was in the world, but the world through its own being to him did not recognize him. He entered his own realm, and his own would not receive him. But to all who did receive him, to those who have yielded him their allegiance, he gave the right to become children of God not born of any human stock, or by the fleshy desire of a human father, but the offspring of God himself. So the word became flesh. He came to dwell among us, and we saw his glory, such glory as befits the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of God. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our humble little church. Um, I'm glad that you're here. And uh, we have coffee and tea across the way in a public safe manner through the court garden in the hall. And at the end of today's service, as we do 52 Sundays a year, uh, and some fellowship. This place, however, church might become your place of sanctuary and shelter in an otherwise uncertain and anxious world. Um, there are a lot of people, I think, who feel all alone in the world. Our strong affirmation is that uh, you are not alone. We will walk with you. We will be uh, a kind of extended family for you if that's what you want. And unlike perhaps other churches, we're not here to brainwash you. I might try a little of that now and then. But we encourage uh, free will, liberty of thought, freedom of conscience, and a Christianity that does not insult the intelligence of uh, its parishioners. This year is going to be a great year for us. We're storming out of COVID lockdown. We're working with groups that share our values, like the gardening mob. You may have seen the plants in the backyard. They're a gardening group that will be calling Coburg its home on, uh, well, forever, hopefully, if things go well. But we have a memorandum of understanding for the next two years. Uh, they are a very significant gardening group that does uh, therapeutic horticulture and other things. They'll be here mostly, well, watering pretty much every day when it's required, and then on other days, particularly Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, so come and have a cuppa with them. If you're interested in gardening, they're your group, Dale and Mary, I believe you said. We have Ruth Kennedy's choirs joining us starting in early February, practicing probably on a Thursday here. 
She runs choirs from Kensington to Preston and is looking for a new home. We aim to offer her a home. And we have sister works. They make masks and jewelry. They're migrants and refugee women who bring their sewing machines and will be joining us on the, around the 9th or 10th of February to begin a seven week course at Coburn Church. You will find your true self, the best version of yourself, with us here. You can't do it alone. Lone Rangers don't survive. So let us join you on your sacred journey, your life journey, to find the best version of yourself. And to bring it forth, solo, come forth, bring forth that blessing. And uh, we want to join you on that journey. Um, for those who are keen, I'm here for Soul Group. We'll do a straw poll about after the service. If you'd like to join me for a discussion of today's topic or just to share your life story in confidence, I'm happy to meet with you at the close of today's service in the Irvine Lounge. Uh, the Soul Group, that meets on the first Sunday every month. Mary Oliver said it so well. How will you live your one wild and precious life. I like to say that at baptisms. What will you do with your one wild and precious life? As the new year has dawned on all of us, I've been thinking, I haven't really achieved that much in my life. I had all these dreams and big ambitions when I was younger. It's all come to nothing, or so it would seem. Sometimes you have to let those thoughts go through to the keeper and not get obsessed with your perceived shortcomings. I don't know what is going on with my slides. Um, Sam and Poppy Chat and Playgroup, they meet every Friday in turn, started by Reverend Keith Haddon and Rachel Esposito. Uh, that's a great program as well in our church. There are times when you can look back at the vista, the wide vista of your life, and it seems more like a corridor of pain and the darkness of the soul rather than that light. Remember that light? It shines even in the darkness, and the darkness is not overcoming. It can sometimes be difficult to move to that light, when all seems lost. But the readings this morning remind us that there is a greater energy that is active in the world, that is greater than the human mind, that is greater than your false pride, and greater than your doubts, self-doubts and fears. And the power of faith is greater than the power of fear. They wrote the passage in the first chapter of John 70 years after the Christ of our faith was crucified. That would be like me in 2000 writing about the Great Depression of the 1930s, 70 years on. But such was the ratings and the inspiration that Jesus gave. But they could still say we beheld the word, full of grace, full of truth. And even his own people did not accept him, Christ. But to those who do, he gives them power. Power for what? Power to become sons and daughters of God. And that doesn't mean anything to you. It can mean this. Power to live from your true self, your essential self, which is spirit, which is that part of God that is within all people, the God within. But sometimes to do that, we need to intercept our negativity and our cynicism, especially with the state of the world now with COVID-19 savaging democracies and families right around the world. I like the story of my favorite quarterback in the NFL. I know this will thrill you with the National Football League in the United States. Gridiron. 
His name is Aaron Rodgers. I wear his t-shirt, number 12, of the Green Bay Packers. And this story is about you. Aaron Rodgers is a quarterback headed for the NFL Hall of Fame. He'll probably win the most valuable player this year. He's been around since about 2010. Now, during the draft, where they draft new players from university into the NFL, Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback of the Packers, was watching it on TV. The Packers traded to get a quarterback from the university. A first round draft pick. Now, if you're the incumbent quarterback and you're watching that on TV, what does that message send you about the team that you're leading? They've just drafted someone to replace you. A kind of succession plan. Aaron Rodgers said of that moment, you know, I could have let negativity and uh, bitterness creep in, but I went to my kitchen, I got a glass of tequila, I charged my phone, and I began to meditate and to read. He said, and I decided that what the Packers did to me, I would not let the negativity attack me. But I'd be the best quarterback I could possibly be, even though he had been a valuable player for years. It was not enough. He used that moment to live from the best version of himself, which was not bitterness. 2021 demands for your children and your grandchildren that you not live from your bitterness. You have a right to be bitter. But there's another chapter that's about to unfold. How will you make it the best chapter of your life? How will you live your one wild and precious life? Despite the tendency to sometimes believe that my beliefs are far better, that my practice of ministry is the best, that my race and my gender is superior, that my nation is the greatest nation, Despite my human, all too human tendency to believe that my faith is the one true faith, we must beat down the ego and the small self. We must beat down in the name of the kingdom of heaven that exclusiveness and find ways to move beyond cynicism and negativity. Your attitudes matter. They affect your children. They affect the next generation. Your values and beliefs affect the earth. They're a real thing. How long have we lived with a Christian church that has been silent about caring for the earth, Sad. and has therefore become a plaything of the ruling class? Rather than challenging the industrial state and its demands on Mother Earth, Christianity has legitimized it, christened it, and blessed it. Rather than having a prophetic voice of being a, a proponent of the truth, Christians around the world have just supported what the ruling class says. What would 2021 be like if our values changed or were enriched just a little bit? A bit like the gentleman I mentioned last Sunday. He's an entrepreneur who started the program Get Up, which is an advocacy program in Australia. His name escapes me just a moment. But he fell asleep on national TV during Q&A. And it showed him that he needed a change in his life. And so he moved from community activism of get up to the business world. He started a superannuation fund that only invests in green energy, renewable resources, wind and solar. 
and he has changed the whole landscape of superannuation where you invest your retirement funds. Millions have gone now into solar power <coughs> and green energy under his leadership. But guess what he said? He said, when I was doing Get Up, I realized I needed a change, and then he came to me. Global warming is so urgent, I don't want to do anything else but to start working to care for the earth and to stop it. And I'm thinking, you know, the word has become flesh, full of grace, full of truth. And what that man said addressed me. And I thought, you know, 2021 will be my year when I do what I want to do, which is caring for the earth, planting a few trees with the gardening home, maybe doing what is my call. What is yours? 2021 can be a good year, even though it doesn't bring you what you expect. You are complete with the help of Christ within yourself. You have a spirit of joy and fellowship. The story of Christmas is the story that despite all the circumstances, Everything was against Mary and Joseph. And yet, Christmas came. Jesus was born. It was the movement of God and life in defiance of death and tyranny of King Herod. King Herod, like so many others, can appeal to our ego. And we no longer hear the sound of the depth of our soul. We become more driven to driving. We become more the plaything of the ruling class. The wise men could have gone down that path, but the three wise men had the mindfulness. They had the soul to still hear the still small voice of God, a voice that was not toxic, but the author of life. Of their life. I like the story of Alice Summer, who was a Holocaust survivor. Alice to me was the spirit of Christmas and the movement of God's eternal spirit in the face of tyranny. Alice Summer was a, a woman from Prague, Czech Czechoslovakia. And she remembered the atmosphere in her family home. She grew up in the 30s. She lived to be about 102. She said this, my opinion is what you learn in school is important, but much more important is the atmosphere, the intellectual atmosphere that your parents create in your home. She said, this goes with you till your end. And I would add the moral and emotional climate in your family home or in your church. This gave her the resources of strength and character to meet her destiny. So Alice Summer, when the Nazis rolled into Prague, she played her piano, Beethoven, Bach, Chopin. She played her piano while the world around her fell apart. One Nazi major came in and said, you're a Jew, you're not allowed to play Chopin. You're not allowed to play. But she kept on playing and a few Nazis actually joined her in her living room, in her apartment in Prague while she played. She said, Alice Summer said, these words that in survival human relationships matter and everything else you can do with that and that it depends on me it depends on me whether life is good or not not on life but on me there's the spirit of Christmas the indomitable spirit Life is cruel sometimes, 
look at the manger and the dirty state and the harsh circumstances. But in defiance of all that, Christmas came and life keeps coming on. God's life affirms the margin of hope. God's life affirms in us the blessing and not the curse. I hope you will be part of that blessing of hope, not despair, of courage in 2021. At this time, we are going to sing a great hymn, which is on your order of service sheet. The hymn is number 536, an upper road did our Lord prepare. It leads us to the time, uh, and it's in your hymn book, 536. It leads us to the sacrament of Holy Communion. <laughs> Nobody can live in this world successfully without a place of quietness within where the Christ of our faith comes to us again and speaks words of comfort and love to each of us, to the least of us, to you. We thank God, therefore, that he has poured out his spirit and is already present in these gifts of bread and wine, and in each one of us too. 
We pause now for a moment of silence for your prayer as we celebrate with these hallowed gifts of bread and wine, your prayer for others, your prayer for this nation and the world. A moment of quiet. And we pray, eternal God, we give thanks that you so loved the world that you gave us your son to show us the way and all the great heroes of all time who light our path home, back to you, back to each other. We open our hearts and minds in gratitude for the ways the faith has enriched our lives. We are grateful for the many assurances that the spirit of caring surrounds and supports us. And we give now to this bread and wine the special meaning that they will bring to each one of us the renewed awareness of the presence of your good spirit, everlasting God, and the ways of Christ will keep alive the courage to be people of the way helping to build a better humanity. This is our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The great prophets and heroes did not live at the expense of others. Elijah, fighting for Naboth and his vineyard who was killed by King Ahab so Naboth could have his vineyard for a garden. Mary, the mother of Jesus, going into the dirty stable, giving birth to the Son of God, still believed. The early church sharing their meals and everything they had with great joy and generosity. They did not live at the expense of others, but they knew they were a blessing, God's blessing to others. You are bearers of the light. You are now that blessing. Please stand. Behold the cup of eternal life, God's spirit in you, and the bread of life, God's life among us. We join together with the song of hope that rings through the generations. The Sanctus. Give us 
our sins, and as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, and our own. Kingdom come, may God's heaven live in you. All has been made ready for you. I invite you to make your communion with you. If you like, you can join uh, a wide circle observing social distancing, and we'll come around and serve your communion. <laughs> Behold the bread of life. Our life together may be a blessing for him. Take it. I raise the cup in the family of faith. May your love be strong. May your life be a blessing to men. Take and drink. And the blessing. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Let your love be genuine. Love each other with family affection. Love your enemies.
Pray for those who persecute you. Indeed, I say, bless, bless those who curse you. And may the peace of Christmas and of God be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Our last hymn before uh, we now uh, invite those who wish to do, um, give their offerings to support our work. And then our last hymn is Be Thou My Vision. Thank you. 